This line of yarn almost escaped me. Like I got a giant ad from Joanne saying that there's new line brand yarn, clicked on it and almost clicked right out because I was like, this is, this is the same. This is basic stitch yarn, thick and quick yarn. I have this yarn. I love this yarn, thick and quick. I, I mean, both of them I have on hand because the basic stitch yarn I love using on my knitting machine. It Like my Adam machine loves it. And then thick and quick I like to have in hand for different types of gifts, like last minute gifts, things I forgot and I need to work up really, really quickly. Like I have a bunch of that. Even scrolled a little bit to see the colors and the colors were very similar. So I was like, okay, what is going on? There's something that I'm missing. So we have the worsted weight basic stitch and the thick and quick. But the thing that's different is that they are claiming to be antimicrobial and pet friendly, basically. Yeah, there's a big sticker on it that says pet friendly. Anti-allergen stitching, long lasting freshness for your projects while preventing odor, bacteria, and allergens. Obviously, the only way I'm gonna be able to test this out and see if these are like true statements is make something, let my cats chill around in it. But here is the thing, anything that I make for my cats, they're like, no, thank you. So I have to make it and pretend like it is used for me. Like if I make a blanket for myself, my cats will steal it. But if I make a blanket specifically for them, they want nothing to do with it. So I got a couple of different colors and a couple of different weights. I think I'm just gonna do a blanket, honestly. I'm just gonna do a granny square blanket. Maybe I'll do some on my Addy machine. I don't know. I haven't entirely figured that out yet. I do like the spice colors. So this one down here is spice. The one up on top, I think this one is charcoal. This one is called smoke. This one is cement and this is charcoal. Both of the lines have all the same uh, colorways. Oh, and then here is the spice. So this is the thick and quick from the colors. I ended up doing a pickup at Joanne and it, they didn't have all of the colors, but let's just pull up what colors they actually have in store because I bet you if I went right now they would probably have more. So in each line there are 12 different colors and they are all very very similar if not exactly the same. They, they might be the same which would make a lot of sense. Yeah it looks like they're the same. I tried to get as many variation as I could. The basic stitch I was only able to grab two out of the 12. They were still stocking it though. So like I said, I might go back if I love them and grab a couple of extra colors, but all of these together, if I can hold them all up, very fall colors. And they have like a green, a clay, there's a lilac, a really deep blue there, but like all the rest of them, I feel like would look really, really nice all together. And even like the lilac, you could pair it with a charcoal. They're fantastic at what they do with their colors. A lot of times they end up sticking with a very similar palette from line to line. And if you like those colors, it's exciting because you know there's a pretty good chance in their next or like their new line of yarn, they'll have a very similar color to that. So the spice, I always get the charcoal and then whatever the variation they have from that. Some lines they'll have an actual black yarn but normally in their brand new lines, it's just either a charcoal, a cement or smoke or whatever they call it, like a, a super dark gray or not even really that dark of gray. That's, that's about as dark as it gets for this entire line. But these two together, my favorite, and I think it would make a super cute hat. Initial feel for the thick and quick. It's a soft yarn, but there's like something a little bit off. Feel I would have to take breaks if I was using this yarn, which isn't that unlike the thick and quick line that they have right now. For me, I can only use it for a little bit, but it, like once it's all put together, I love it. And it's one of my absolute favorite hats that I have. This is suggesting a nine millimeter crochet hook. It's a bulky number five, 65% recycled polyester. So that is probably why that little bit of roughness in there. And then the rest is 35% acrylic. It is machine washable, which is fantastic. And then lay flat to dry, which is obviously because of whatever they did to the yarn to make this antimicrobial, like laying it flat to dry is obviously gonna be the best because it means it's gonna last as long as it possibly can. As usual, check out linebrands.com. They have a ton of free patterns. I don't think there's one on the inside. No, 100 grams, 3.5 ounces. Protects against odors, allergens, and bacteria 
bacteria up to 100 washes. Stitch up sweaters for babies, adults, or even pets, or whip up accessories like hats, mittens, scarves. Again, if you like or have used Thick and Quick, like this is gonna work up, I'm assuming, exactly like Thick and Quick. And there are a ton of patterns out there, not only on their site, but many, many humans in the world love this yarn and they've created patterns for it. So you can find them everywhere. Basic Stitch was the one that I was the most excited about. And again, it's just a little tiny bit off. I think once I work it up and just do hold on to the strand by itself, that doesn't irritate my skin as much as just kind of like rubbing the entire thing. And it's not even like irritate. It's just like there's, again, there's just something a little bit off. It's a little bit harsh. So whatever I make with it, I for sure I'm gonna throw it in the washer. This is a number four medium, suggests a five millimeter crochet hook, and then everything else is exactly the same. Never mind. No, this one you can put it in the washer and the dryer. So thick and quick, no, lay it flat to dry, throw it in the wash, throw it in the dryer. Now does that change the amount of washes that it gets? No, it doesn't. It says up to 100 washes. Okay, so it's just the yarn that was slightly different. So let's just do a little sample with these. I think I'm gonna do granny square for both of them to see how I like it in crochet form and then throw it on the Addy machine too because like I said, this is my go-to for the Addy machine and I just wanna know how it's gonna feel like holding on to it. It's working up exactly how I thought. When I just have this single strand of yarn running against my fingers, I don't feel the harshness that I did in the skein form. And I'm liking the definition that it's forming too with the stitches. And it also feels a little bit softer all worked up too. It has a nice flow to it, nice little drape action there. So here is the final square. I'm just doing a five by five for all of the squares. It's just gonna be a patchwork blanket, but I am interested in seeing how it works up in Tunisian crochet form. So I already pulled this one out. I started it crochet. I did the silt stitch with this one, then pulled that out, decided no, I don't wanna do that. We're gonna work it up in Tunisian crochet. I don't think at this point I'm gonna be shocked by anything because it's the same line. And like once I got over the initial reaction of the little bit of harshness, worked around with it for a little bit. It's essentially the same line that I've been using for years and years. So it's gonna work up nicely, but I have never used a thick and quick with my Tunisian crochet. I'm just gonna do a simple stitch. I'm not gonna do anything crazy. I just wanna work up this square again really quickly. I don't even know if these are gonna be the same size. Flowing really nice. I did grab a 10 millimeter Tunisian crochet hook. It doesn't seem like it has a lot of curl to it either which is super nice because Tunisian crochet in general, no matter what you do or what stitch, it's gonna have quite a bit of curl compared to crochet, but this is it's turning out really nice. I mean, we have a little curl action right there, but compared to other stuff that I've worked up, this is actually really relaxed. Okay, let's just finish this one. Are we even close on size? Oh, we actually are. That's fantastic, without even measuring. Wow. I'm gonna do a tube pillow on my Addy machine. Since I have two skeins, that's exactly the amount that I need for this pillow cover. And I figured since I'm making them a blanket to test it out that way, they love pillows. So worst case scenario, they don't even use the blanket. I know for sure they're gonna use the pillow. It's gonna end up being two-toned. I'm gonna do 40 rows of each. I can also do them stripey, but for some reason I'm thinking, well, it's probably just because I wanna do it the easiest way possible. And this is it, 40 rows of each color. Pulling it out, it doesn't feel harsh either. It also could just 100% be me. It's the end of winter, my hands are kind of dry. I mean, it totally could have been me. But like just playing around with it, it doesn't feel harsh anymore. And like, again, single strand, yeah. It's working really well on the adding machine. There are no drop stitches. Nothing's getting compacted. They're all nice and even. And I'm almost to 40, what I have, 32 rows right now. So when things go well on the Addy machine and I don't have to fight with the yarn, these projects go super quick. I forgot to show you, the other one pulled from the middle really nicely. So let's see if this one does the same. Not too bad, relatively easy to find the end. I for sure would continue to pull it from the middle anyways. Exactly what I thought was gonna happen 
happened. I have had this blanket done for a solid 48 hours now and none of my cats have slept on it. And I also have the pillow done too. So here we have the little blanket. It's adorable and it looks super cozy, right? Like, I mean, I would snuggle up in it. And this pillow, okay, we've got a lot of cozy vibes going on. And so like I set it in their kitty coffins, in the places that they like to groom, by the window, the cat towers. I moved it all over the place and I know exactly what they're doing. Like they all got together collectively and were like, hey, I know this looks really cozy, but like, hear me out for a second. How about nobody lays on it? Just leave it alone. It's gonna be hilarious. Like nobody touch it. Don't even look at it. Like when you walk by it, walk the long way around the couch. Like they got nowhere near it. So I'm calling it. What I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna get more of this yarn. It's gonna make a bunch of these like squares, mini squares, put them all together and make a bigger square and then put those squares together. So a giant patchwork within a patchwork type of blanket. I'm just gonna make it a full human sized blanket. And I know the minute that I finish it and I go to sit down and like cuddle up in it, maybe watch a movie, I don't know, just enjoy the time of making this blanket. They're gonna be like, thank you so much. Thank you so much and this is now my blanket and all three of them are gonna snuggle up in it. I know it's gonna happen, like it's inevitable. Yarn wise, let's talk about the thick and quick first. I definitely will be buying more. Obviously, we just chatted about that. I'm gonna get more in order to make an entire blanket. After I got it out of the actual skein of yarn and just had like the single strand, it didn't feel weird on my fingers. It didn't irritate it. It didn't like sensory overload me as I was working with it. I did this all in one sitting. As I was watching a movie, did this all together. These parts are Tunisian crochet squares and then I just did a little zigzag stitch to seam them all together. So I did it all in one setting and my fingers felt fine, which that's that's perfect. That's the main thing that I was concerned with. And once I got going, obviously it wasn't an issue. I will say though, if you are like me and like there are certain sensory feels that really get you when it comes to yarn, I would at least try to go in store and like feel it out just to double check because it does have a little bit of a different feel. I would totally snuggle under this and have no issues at all. So I guess I would just say if you can and at all possible and you're interested in trying this out, at least go and kind of get like a sense of what it's gonna feel like. I'm gonna make two more of these with the ones that I have left and then I'm gonna go get some other colors and then do a full pillow in that color. Out of the three different techniques that I used, Tunisian crochet, crochet, and my knitting machine, I preferred the Tunisian crochet. Especially with the thick and quick, I just like the stitch definition that it made. So I would say if you have been looking at this yarn and you're just interested in it and testing it out, I'd say go for it. Out of the two lines, the thick and quick, if you wanna do home decor, like blankets, throws, things like that, definitely go for the thick and quick. And if you wanna do like cardigans, beanies, fingerless mitts, wearables, though I did make a pillow with it this time. So obviously you can use it for whatever you want, but if you need a little bit of direction or you like, you have too many ideas and you're like, I don't know, like what should I do for that? That's normally what I do with these types of yarn. Or you can just be like me and grab a couple of colors in each of the lines and play around with it because in the end I had a lot of fun just like messing around with it. This could be potentially another super fun blanket that I'm gonna add onto my movie room. So happy accidents all around. Sometimes I just have to get into the project before I even know where it's gonna go. Like this, I, I had no idea until we actually got here that I was gonna do a patchwork Tunisian crochet blanket. That was not even on my mind. If you are new to Tunisian crochet, you might wanna check this out. Grab a little spice, grab some charcoal, put them all together, make yourself your own trick-or-treat blanket. All right, ghouls, so that is officially it. And of course, I will keep you up to date on the Alanis Blossom stormy saga of if they ever actually end up laying on this blanket. And if I can, I will give you a full update on the blanket and when I start washing it for its 100 wash cycles, probably a twin size. Like we're, we're gonna stay there. I'm not gonna do a giant blanket with this one. We're just gonna stick with a twin. That way I can use it a lot quicker and potentially, hopefully, they will go ahead and snuggle up in it a lot sooner. That is it for me today. So thank you for hanging out with me here in the Yarn Dungeon, checking out some brand new squishy yarn. Have a fantastically spooky rest of your day and I 
I will see you in my next video.